This is how the vocal sounds like without any processing. So basically, fully dry. So if I add all my Cubase plugins on this vocal chain, this is what I get. Now is it possible to mix vocals and get a pro sounding result using only Cubase plugins? Now I love working in Cubase and I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't use all of Cubase plugins when I mix a song. I do use some of Cubase plugins and also some third party plugins, uh, but the principle remains the same. It's all about the type of processing that I do more than the plugins I work with. So what I decided to do for this video is to mix a vocal by using only Cubase plugins and show you what I would do and which plugins in Cubase I would work with if I had to mix a lead vocal by using only Cubase plugins. The first thing I like to do when mixing a vocal is to add a high pass filter. In this case, what I'm going to do uh, in Cubase is to use the low cut or high pass filter straight from uh, the channel itself, which will come before all the inserts and also before the channel strip. So it's the pre module that we have right here where, where you can also gain stage the vocal, which is also an important aspect on setting up the gain staging level of the vocal before starting to mix the vocal to make sure that the vocal is not too loud and sits at the right level. So this can be done in the pre gain section and what I want to look at is the low cut filter, which is basically a high pass filter. So I set that up at around 100 Hertz and that will depend on the type of vocal I'm mixing. So that number can vary and this will get rid of all the low information that I don't need on this vocal sound. Uh, then I'm going to jump on the first plugin on my vocal chain, which is going to be a tape emulation plugin. And this one is Magneto 2, which is part of Cubase. It's a great plugin, works pretty well. And what this is going to do is to emulate the sound of a tape machine by adding some light saturation to a sound, which will basically create harmonics uh, to the sound. So what I have, I have my saturation level right here, and uh, I have the frequency range that at the moment is set up between 400 Hertz and 4K. And this is how it sounds like. Trouvé par la rose et je fuis vers l'infiniment petit Le regard tourné okay. vers... Okay, it's very subtle. But you can hear that light saturation and those very nice mid-range harmonics uh, that brings the vocal just a bit more upfront, you know, a bit more present, uh, which I kind of like. So this is usually what I like to add as a first plugin. If I'm not using Magneto, I might use another tape emulation plugin. And I also like to use a channel strip based and modeled after an actual console, like an SSL console or a Neve console, you know. So these are the types of plugins that I like like to add right away so I can get that type of analog tone right away early in the chain. Now, Cubase also has a channel strip on every channel. Now, this one is not modeled after a specific analog type console, but you have access to all different mixing modules part of this channel strip, which is pretty cool. So it does sound clean to begin with without adding any color to the sound. So most of the plugins that I'm using as an insert on a channel can also be found in the channel strip. Uh, so the first in the chain, like I said, was Magneto. If you prefer to use Magneto from the channel strip, you can under the SAT modules. And under that module, you have access to Magneto. And from that point, you can just drag it to the top of the chain within the channel strip, okay? Hey, I just wanna let you know that I have a free gift for you. You can download 100% free, my complete guide on mixing vocals. It's a free printable PDF that you can use every time you mix vocals. Again, the link is down below. Let's get back to it. Next on the list is frequency, which is a very good EQ in Cubase. Um, and this one is part of the Pro version. And I'm going to use this first pass at EQ to correct stuff up, you know, so correction EQ, basically, just to clean up the sound a bit. Trouvé par la rose et je fuis vers l'infiniment petit 
So what I had to do uh, for this vocal, and those are not moves that I do on every vocal, it depends on what I work with. So it's very important when doing EQ uh, on a vocal or any other tracks to use your ears and to have a reason to do the moves that you want to do. Now, in my case, the vocal sounded a bit too muddy, a bit too boxy. So that's why I got rid and I just attenuated uh, some low mid frequencies. If we listen in the context of the mix, Okay, so now the vocal sounds more clear and sits better within the mix. And I also have a slight cut, just a tiny one, uh, on the higher mid-range at around 2. Point something kilohertz, 2.4 actually, just to get rid of a bit of harshness that I have within these frequencies. And that actually is my first pass at EQ, okay? Uh, then will come the, the esser, um, just to control the S's uh, that I have on this vocal. So pay attention to the S's and I'm gonna activate the de if I bypass it. Okay, way more controls. Okay, so this is what I like to do after I'm done with my first pass at EQ. I'm gonna add a de -esser. Then will come the first compressor. And yes, I'm saying the first because I'm gonna add a second one afterwards. And if you're familiar with this channel, you know that I like to use two compressors on my vocals. Uh, the first one is gonna be uh, just to control the peaks out of the vocal. And I'm gonna use for this one, the vintage compressor. I kinda like this one. It does react like a vintage type of analog compressor. And this is why I like to work with this one. Uh, so attack and release is pretty fast. Um, and I also have a high ratio. Uh, I could do the same thing with a lower ratio and get more gain reduction, uh, but I kind of like to have a higher ratio, get less of gain reduction, and just focus on the peaks of this vocal to control them and to bring them down when they overload uh, the dynamic side of the vocal. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so I'm not reducing a lot, okay? I'm just catching the peaks. Now those peaks are getting way more controlled, okay? And this is what I want. Uh, then will come my second compressor. Um, and that will depend on what needs to be done. Now, compression might add a bit more low mids to the sound. Um, and this is what it did slightly uh, on this one, okay? So what I did is to add a bit more clarity uh, by boosting the top, uh, the top frequencies of this vocal sound. So a quite slight boost at around 5.5 uh, to 6K, and also a high shelf uh, filter just to add more clarity and more air to the vocal sound. And I also have some dynamic EQ to control a bit more the low mids of the vocal. Next will come the second compressor and its role is mainly to level up the general volume of the vocal. Uh, I'm gonna use tube compressor, which is gonna act a bit like an LA-2A in a way. Uh, sounds pretty nice. There's some very nice features on this compressor like the drive knob, the character. Uh, the character will add a bit more harmonics uh, to the compressed sound and drive will add some drive uh, to the, um, the compressed sound, which will also add some harmonics. Uh, I have a fairly slow attack and a fast release. Uh, the ratio is at low, so I think it's the equivalent of a three for one ratio on this one. And I'm gonna get between two and four dBs of gain reduction. Let's have a quick listen. back. So 
also we have a way more stable dynamic range uh, on this vocal by using a second compressor. So I'm kind of sharing the load between two compressors. Instead of putting all the load on one compressor, I'm just splitting that up between two compressors. This way I get a more transparent compression sound on this uh, vocal. Uh, then if I need to, I'm going to add a second de-esser, which I'm not going to do at the moment, but it's still there if I need it. What I like to do next is to add parallel compression. Uh, and this will actually bring my vocals a bit more upfront, a bit more loudness to the vocal. So one way to do it is to duplicate the vocal track, add a compressor, add lots of gain reduction on that compressor and just blend it with the original uh, channel. But what I did in this case is I created an effects channel track, uh, which is my parallel compressor channel. And I just balance the amount of compressed signal with the channel's fader. Very simple to do. And I'm actually using the channel strip for this one. So I have, uh, if I look at the channel strip uh, first, okay, I have a high pass filter uh, just to get rid of everything under uh, 60 Hertz. Then come all the processing within the channel strip. So I have some saturation. Yes, I decided to use uh, some saturation. So it is at the same time parallel compression, but also parallel saturation but all under one channel. So the tube sat is the first uh, module that I have just to add a very nice saturation. Then I have the vintage compressor, uh, which is gonna add lots of gain reduction with a high ratio. It doesn't matter if I get lots of gain reduction because I'm gonna blend this with the original uh, vocal channel. I also added a bit of de on this channel uh, because it seemed like uh, having lots of compression and saturation kind of created a bit of sibilance problem. So that's why I have a de on top of that. And then will come the EQ uh, to add a bit of uh, uh, top end to the signal and also to cut the low mid, uh, the low mids of the compressed signal. And this is how it sounds like on its own. Okay, not that good on its own, but when you blend it with the original signal, this is where the magic happens. Now the vocal sounds a bit more upfront and it also adds a bit more clarity to the vocal sound. And I kind of like that. Then what I do is I just uh, take those two channels, route them straight into this group. And this is the channel I'm gonna use to do my vocal automation afterwards. So this way I'm gonna keep my relationship between my lead vocal channel and my parallel compression channel. Okay, so that balance is gonna stay put uh, if I do some vocal automation, okay, on this group channel. So that's why I routed that to this group channel. Uh, then from this group channel, uh, I'm gonna send that signal to my reverb my slap delay, and also my long delay. So let's have a listen to how it sounds like with the reverb and delays. Okay, cool. Now I'm not gonna go through all the settings and plugins that I used for reverb and delays, but if you want me to do a video talking about the plugins that I used as a reverb and delays for this vocal, let me know down below. Now I'm gonna leave the reverb and delay on. Now, once my vocal is mixed, if I need to retouch that vocal afterwards, um, let's say I want to just make it a bit more clear, a bit less of uh, low mids, I can do it straight from my group channel. So I do have a frequency preloaded on this channel. Uh, so this way, if I need to add a cut or um, dynamic EQ on certain bands of frequencies, I can do so in a very fast way. Or you can also use the general EQ of the channel uh, from the channel strip if you prefer. So 
So this is a very fast way to get to AQ a track in Cubase. As you can see, this is what I would do if I was to mix vocals using only Cubase plugins. So from song to song, the order of things might vary. The way I route things up also might vary, but the same type of processing that I use every time will remain the same. And that also goes when mixing with third-party plugins. Now, if you want to know more about how to mix vocals, you can watch my complete guide to mix vocals like a pro by clicking the video right here. Leave your questions and comments down below. If you have any questions or comments, or if you want to share your own vocal mixing chain, you can leave everything down below. And don't forget to share, like if you enjoyed this video, and to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Until next time, take care and see you.